Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. Now over the past several months or years I've been going through all the various different possible bindings that are possible in Microsoft Flight Sim and there's a heck of a lot of them that you can bind. Many of them you may not have even come across or even have thought to bind. Well, in this, in this video, I'm going to show you some useful and unusual bindings. Things like the CFD, it's kind of like the airflow over your aircraft, isn't it? And as we're flying through dismal weather in the UK here, let's turn on some thermals. Oh, the ship, there we go. Thermals are showing. That's coloured up the sim a little bit, hasn't it? Settings like that. Even settings like popping out your flight displays and resizing them now will that stick if I go to the it does indeed sticks even when you go to the external view of your aircraft so I'm going to be going through a few different settings with you in this video some of them you may find useful others you may not but I'll tell you what let's not dilly dally let's get on with this video Okay, so as I continue to fly around a very murky Leeds Bradford area in the UK, the reason for that will become apparent later. Well, let's start setting up some of these settings that I found. Now, I'm using the Logitech Throttle Quadrant for this. These five buttons, like button six, I've got my parking brake set up there. I'm going to keep it there. That's what I prefer. But the, the other five, I'll be setting up some of these settings and showing you. And whatever control you're using, make sure it's highlighted. I've just basically, and you can do this on Xbox and PC, open the preset manager and duplicated a previous setup and just deleted whatever were on those five buttons. So you can just duplicate preset manager in case you don't know how to do that. Click on duplicate, it'll come up with a box saying to rename it. That will be your new profile that you'll be using. And if you don't want these buttons set up, uh, just delete them like I've done. Okay, so what I'm going to go, go and do is filter to all for this one. Filter to all. First thing we'll do, so filter all, that's important. Go to the menu, and it'll show all the possible settings. Look for toggle at the beginning. There we go, toggle toolbar. That's one I want, and toggle active pause. Toggle toolbar, let's put it on button one. This one's quite useful in some situations. So search by input and then click on button one, validate and apply and save. And toggle active pause. So what I'm doing, I'll go a bit slower for the new people here. Click in the box you want to assign, toggle active pause. Left click on that. Left click on start scanning and press the button. It's button five for me. Toggle active pause. And validate and apply and save. Now let's go back to the sim. So toggle active pause. Let's do that one first. As it says on a tin, it will toggle the pause, but the world will move around you. So if there were cars or other aircraft like this one behind me, uh, that will be zooming past me. On a live stream flight, I find this useful in case I'm well ahead of people and I need to pause. Just click on that button. Or if I see a site of interest, if I'm flying over the Hoover Dam, which I was recently, I flew over it, clicked on toggle active pause, I could zoom in to take a closer look at it. So it's quite a handy feature. Toggle toolbar. Yes, you can go to the top of the screen here and select your toolbar. Sometimes if you're in the midst of setting up your controls or goodness knows what, you can just click on the button you set for toggle toolbar. Good thing is now that toolbar will stay on the top of your screen until you press toggle toolbar again. So you can have like a permanent toolbar if that's what you if that's what you prefer. I know a lot of people don't like that, but it can be useful in certain situations. So I could select whatever I've got on this toolbar here, Navigraph, Taboo, SimFX is that I believe or something. I, you can just select them. To get rid of the toolbar, press toggle toolbar again. So quite useful, depending on your needs. Let's go back to options, 
options and control options now this should work on both xbox and pc i've only tested it on pc so far so xboxes let me know if this will work this one's going to be mightily useful in certain aircraft go to filter all on the control you're setting up i'm going to be using button two for this one so filter all search by name this box here search by name click into it left click and just type in new space and that's all you need we're setting up new ui window it allows you to send as you can see there send the mouse hovered cockpit screen to a new window very useful so button two left click into it start scanning i'm going to click button two and validate oh it paused a bit there. Apply and save. Go back. Resume. Get in the cockpit. Now, depending on the aircraft, I can see both these screens quite easily from this view. But if I want to take a closer look at that map screen, I want to pop it out. Left, uh, Hold down the button you just set up. You'll see a plus on the magnifying glass there. Left click when you're hovering over the window. It will pop it out for you. Look, we've got a bigger view of the map there. You can resize that. And, the beautiful thing is here, I can resize it, put it to where I want, pop outside the aircraft, oops, you have to get away from the screen, pop outside the aircraft, that window's going to remain, I can see what's on my map there if I need it while I'm looking around outside as well, and just left click the little cross to get rid of it. So it works for both screens, let's just show you, there you go, I can bring up the primary flight display there resize it to the screen size you want that will do put it to where you want bob's your uncle it's there inside or outside of your aircraft xboxes let me know if that works okay okay let's show you a couple more settings okay there's a couple more settings i want to show you this is why i've got it on live weather as you'll see in a moment escape control options Again, select the device that you're setting the buttons up on. And we'll go to filter to, oh, oops, filter to all. There we go. And we want to select the miscellaneous menu and just look for toggle at the beginning of the sentence there. Toggle. We're looking for toggle. CFD and 3D thermals. I'm going to set up button 3 and 4 for this. So toggle CFD, button 3, click the button, validate, apply and save, toggle thermals, so I'm just clicking in the box by the way, clicking in the box, search by input, and click the button you want to set up for toggle 3D thermals display, validate, apply and save, go back, resume. So let's do the CFD first, it gives you the kind of airflow over your aircraft. Now that's too busy for a lot of people. You go in the cockpit and it really looks like you're travelling through space there. <laughs> but I guess it gives you the kind of uh, airflow and dynamics, shall we say, uh, that are happening across the your aircraft there as you're travelling forward. Let's do the thermals ones. This is going to be mighty... Oh my goodness, that's a lot of thermals. Mightily useful for glider pilots and that type of thing. If anything, it really makes the sim come alive, doesn't it? <laughs> Are we still flying in Microsoft Flight Sim at this point? So there you go, it'll give you the various thermals. So if I took it off autopilot and maybe flew to once towards one of these thermals, shouldn't affect the Cessna 172 too much, but it will do if you were in a glider. I can't tell what's happening with this weather now. What, are we flying above ground? It looks like it just about. And there you go. And you can do goodness knows what. Let's turn out to pilot back on before I crash or something. So there you go. Some settings that you may not have even realised were there. And some of them certainly. Let's turn these thermals and CFD off. Get back in the cockpit. I really like this one. And it's one that I'm going to add to my setup I think permanently, because it could be handy for some aircraft to pop some of these windows out. And certainly the active pause is always useful for me. So there you go. 
Just some settings I wanted to show you. Test them on both Xbox and PC and let me know how you get on. Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more and I'll see you soon.